Hello, and welcome back to Reading Radio. I'm Alora. I'm Jason. And this month we have a special visitor. Hello, I'm Mama. <laughs> Is that how we have to refer to you the rest of the episode now? Mama. Okay. <laughs> So this month's book is The Knife of Never Letting Go, the first in the Chaos Walking Trilogy by Patrick Ness. Well done. You made it all the way through. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so we uh, picked this book because the movie is just hitting the theaters. I think it's supposed to come out the 19th. Nope. It released on the 5th. So oh. it's hitting the theaters right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We're a, as of right now, a read it before you watch it family. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, Zoe has changed her mind and I am inclined to change my mind as well. Look, I'm sorry. It just it ruins the experience of watching the movie if you read the book first. That's become my conclusion. So if you want two good experiences, you have to watch the movie first. If you want a good experience and a bad experience, you watch. We'll read debate the book this first. at a later point in time. I think this is the perfect time to debate it. Do you have any good update, like big updates in your life, to just talk about before we get into the book? Not really. What's going on with you? Hmm. Well, I am debating in between my head now. I just finished the Netflix series Bridgerton. And I didn't know that a book was involved and that it's a nine book series. So now I'm debating in my head because I was getting ready to read the first book. But I don't know whether to read the first book since I've already watched it. Because I am a normally a read it before you watch it type of girl. And I'm scared that the book's going to be not as good because I enjoyed the show. So do I just skip? You have to talk. Do I just skip into the next book? Since season two isn't released yet, and then that way I know what's coming out? I think the only experience I've had with with watching before reading would have been The 100 by Cass Morgan. Because we watched the TV show on Netflix um, just for something to watch. And then it said on the bottom, based on the book by Cass Morgan. And they are two completely different things. Very loosely based (laughs) on a faint idea of Cass Morgan's books. The characters share the same names. That's about it. So they can't have that little thing at the end that said the, like this work of fiction is work of fiction and any similarity between this and other work or maybe they did any similarity between this and Cass Morgan's work is purely coincidental. <laughs> um, that may be true, honestly. <laughs> all right, so. All right, so we can move right into a summary, or at least our high level, conversation about the book. I knew nothing about it going in. Did you guys know anything? I had seen the trailer for the movie, which doesn't speak for much. Well, you told me I did too, but now I don't remember it. I mean, you were the one that showed it to us, because Zoe pointed it out. So we had watched the trailer together, and I was curious about the book. So then I got the book. All I knew was that I saw that the movie was coming out, and it has Tom Holland, and since someone in the family has a crush on Tom Holland, not I... (laughs) I felt that possibly it was a good book to read to be able to go see the movie because I am a firm believer of book before movie. I'm sorry. Since this is a reading podcast, I have to correct you. It's not me. Not not I. When you say someone has a, a crush in his family. Sorry. Wouldn't normally be pedantic like that, but this is kind of a literature podcast. We have to maintain certain standards. <laughs> You should see the look I'm getting, people. It's Mama a- out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so overall impressions. Scale of one to five. One being absolute garbage, nobody should ever read this book. Five being, oh, wow, everybody should be should read this book. Whole book, right? Not. <laughs> Where is she? Whole book. Uh, Don't give away any spoilers till we get to the spoilers. Zone. Three and a half, I think. Three and a half. <sighs> For a new premise, not really tying into something else, I would say four. Four. Man, I'm going to go three and a half, and we can, we can discuss a little bit of why later. I was really into it. Like, we all plowed through this book. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have to wait to get to spoiler territory before we talk about it. Right, um, age-appropriateness. Um, hmm. I mean, the romance level was pretty low compared to most. I don't think there really there was wasn't any. Yeah, any. I was going to say... Which there probably will be in the movie. That's the other thing that uh, I think will irritate me. But there's quite a lot of descriptive gore. A lot of violence and language intentionally and unintentionally given. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember I remember talking about it with Zoe. There was like three GDs right in the bit right in the, the beginning. First page. But that was like the most like that was the most concentrated swearing there was, as I recall. Because some of it was kind of made up things or 
it'd be effin, except literally, I didn't say effin, and yeah. that was, would be what it says. But it was literally E-F-F-I-N. Yeah. Right? And, and we know it can't be said in the movie that many times because it's... Would raise the ratings. He, yeah. You only get 13. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm curious, because, <laughs> because the whole noise factor, can you, like... Can he literally in his head say, but I, like, can it be him telling the story in the narrative? It'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of cool things you can do with this concept in a movie mm -hmm. that you couldn't do with a normal movie, I feel like, because of that. I would let Zoe at age 12 read it. She's also read The Hunger Games and was fine with them, but other thing, like, it would be on the brink, I think, of what would start to bother her. What age do you recommend, then? I think it depends on maturity level. It's a bit above Hunger... We always compare <laughs> violence to Hunger Games. You always compare violence to Hunger Games. <laughs> um, I'd say 13 or 14. Yeah, I, the other thing I to consider, and you guys have to tell me, I listened to it, but my understanding is uh, the it was written in the vernacular to say, so when he didn't know how to say something, he kind of spelled it out in, in a phonetic way that wasn't normal. Yes. Yes. So did that make it harder to read that a, that a kid younger than 12 might struggle with? I could easily see that. My brain naturally c took the pieces that were written and converted them to the word that it was supposed to be. But but it's written especially, in a right, especially in larger in larger words and it's written with kind of an appellation tint to it. Which made it easier for us to understand, but somebody from the I don't know, West Coast might struggle to understand Hillbilly like we do. Right. It took a bit to get used to it, but then I kind of got the words. There was a few I had to like think through it through the context of it but it wasn't terrible yeah so in this case i would vote audiobook just for ease because i never had to worry about any of that stuff it was read to me in that way mm. did, did you give age um i said i think i said 13 or 14 if not that's what i think i'll agree with Alora. just for well 12 i mean it depends like i think zoe'd be okay with it but she's easily offended by language so she probably wouldn't be okay with it but she could be okay with with it normally does that make sense yes I am concerned as what the movie will do with the gore factors. Not to tie too much in with No, that. it'll make it worse. But Well, my guess is it can't be too bad without raising... You'd be amazed what they can do with a PG-13 movie. Oh, really? Kids are getting, um, becoming more and more desensitized to violence, and so, I mean, it's all subjective. So it's just what somebody thinks, and as people get more and more used to that stuff, you can keep doing more and more stuff. I mean, there's a lot of R-rated stuff that would have been not allowed mm. nowadays. But, Dang. Yeah, it is what it is. It's the direction things are going. All right. Time I'm going to I'm only going to watch G movies. It might be. All right. By the... Wish, I still wish I had a stinger for this. We need to find something out there to make it... It's a sound effect that, like, when you... When, like, DJs would change scenes. So I want something to go, like... Some more cool thing that... Can, <laughs> now we're heading into the spoiler zone. So a Wayne's World moment. Kind of. <laughs> for you, those of you old enough to remember that. Um... We're heading into the spoilers right now. We're going to talk about everything in the movie, or sorry, everything in the book. Let me it's try that again. impressive to talk about the movie. We haven't even seen it, it yet. Be. Let me try this one more time. We're now going to head into the spoiler zone. We're going to talk about everything in the book. If you don't want to spoil in the book, you haven't read it yet, stop listening now. Read it. Come join us. And remember to read ahead next time so you can be involved in the conversation. All right. Let's save what we're all thinking. <laughs> for a few minutes. I think the end didn't bother Stop! me nearly as much. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about that right now. So, I got into this book pretty hard. I, mean, I it, did too. It grabbed your attention. It's different. It, there was something new. And especially I mean, the audiobook, when the noise first started to happen, they, they did some sound effects on it. So you literally, it sounds like you're listening to a crowded room where I don't, mm. I don't know visually how they did it in the book. It was... So I did a Kindle. So it was a complete white background in the area of where the noise was with words just layered in huge fonts and small fonts all over like each other. Like a word other. cloud kind yeah, of Yeah, like a big block of word cloud. But like of. you couldn't read what each individual word mm -hmm. was. It kind of just all blurred together. Oh, yeah. nice. So it did a yeah. really good effect in the book of looking chaotic. Yeah, and so that's a theme running through the entirety of this of the book. Like Chaos Walking is the name mm -hmm. of it. Which I don't know that I completely understand yet. Like what Unless it's just the chaos of the noise and the chaos of everybody living in isolation and that sort of thing. Maybe. I would think it, when I interpret the title, well, but you have to understand, 
we are saying Chaos Walking, and Chaos Walking is the title of the trilogy. The trilogy, but the single book that we're talking about is The Knife of Le- Never Letting Go, which is a very appropriate title for this book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, I, that's what I'm wondering if we haven't gotten to the full revelation of what Chaos Walking means. Mm. Mm-hmm. That could be. But opening up, what did, you, what did you think of the overall premise? I thought it was very unique. Like, I've read quite a few books, and I don't think I've seen something with mind reading or things like that to that extent. Yeah, I love they didn't try to explain it. Yeah. Like, there was no kind of scientific explanation for it. Like, we landed here, and suddenly this started to happen. Well, it was meant to, or it was presented to everyone as it was war. And this Originally, was... but that's not, when you find out the truth, that's not really what happened. There was some sort of, yeah, some sort of chemical warfare that was created, a right. germ that was released. But again, they didn't dig into, like, the nuances just, of it. It's mm-hmm. just this is what it is. It happened. What do you think the world would be like if that were the case? Oh, my. And I, I almost kind of feel... I'd live with headphones on. <laughs> That'd be right. terrible. As a woman, just like my anxiety level in general and trying to process things through and to add noise to that factor... Mm-hmm. I would feel insane. Or, or in a classroom or in a subway or I, I, don't I couldn't know how you'd, fathom. I don't know how you'd get any deep work done unless you went miles away from everybody by yourself. But even then, you've got all the animals <laughs> are doing noise. and Which I guess they're, they're an agrarian society. There's no like information work yeah. or deep work that you have to really be focused on. But are you ever going to be able to evolve as a society into something that requires that kind of work because of the noise factor? You just have to do the daily routine of yeah, I don't farm know. and live and be. Yeah. Hmm. I never thought about that concept, but that's probably true. And that could be why the school wasn't that high of a priority. Right, because you need to learn how to farm and survive. You don't. You're never going to be doing. I don't know. You will be a. You're no no major philosophers. Like you don't have you don't have the brain power to think because you're so focused on. You know, hearing noise Task and being distracted. Hand. It reminds me of, uh, oh, Kurt Vonnegut's book where they made the smart people have a buzzer that went off in their ear. Harrison Bergeron. Remember I read that to you? I remember you talked about it. I don't remember reading it. Well, it's, yeah, it's only like, a, it literally takes 10 minutes to read, yeah. so I read it out loud. But, but they would they would, oh, zap, it, they would yeah. zap the smart people with some sort of noise that would make them they'd get distracted so they couldn't think for a long term. Like, that's exactly what everybody would be living. Just nobody being able to concentrate. But how would it feel to be so open and exposed and raw? No. Like, (laughs) because in a typical typical society, males aren't open. They're they're. Which which is interesting. He he did the males, not the females. So I mean, there's reasons for that. I think as the story progresses, but women tend to be more open. So now all of a sudden, the men are open books, Hmm. which is crazy. I heard a comedian a long time ago talking about if you know if men if women knew what men were thinking they would never stop slapping us, and that's all I could think the whole way through this the whole way through this book. I was like, I don't know how women could tolerate like why didn't they murder all the men in their sleep like because women go live up on their own just take the babies yeah split society it's an Amazon society well in some villages they did that right the women mm-hmm. lived, lived in, in, is- in isolation because it's the only way they can sleep I don't know how you would sleep. You, I guess you just get used to it. I guess. Or you get so exhausted. I mean, from birth, if that's what you're dealing with. Yeah. All right, well, let's, the story starts off introducing Todd and Manchie. I love Aww. Manchie. Manchie is adorable. Poo Todd. Uh, Poo Todd. Good Poo Todd. <laughs> that, the way the voice, the voice actor did the book, it's really good. I can't recommend it enough, but it was a... It was really good to separate that out. Like, and I imagine dogs doing that if they could talk. <laughs> hey! Hey, 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 It's only, like, yelling at you for no reason. Yeah. Bathroom? Food? Yeah. Go. That's, well, that's what all the cat is, too. <laughs> like, feed me. Anyway, so yeah. Introduces him to, and uh, Prentice Town. We've got uh, Ben and... Killian. Killian. That's what we decided. <laughs> His dad's, and then uh, really not too many other. There's a, oh Aaron. He meets in the he meets in the swamp there. Kind of right off the bat. Right off the mm-hmm. bat, who like just this crazy religious zealot character. What did you think meeting him? It, 
it felt I almost wanted to instantly put my hackles up and get offended because and again I have to separate understanding that it's a story he was such a hardcore manipulating the Bible thumper yeah you know just beating these scriptures in a very poor form that it was awful yeah, his, his, yeah, exeg- his exegesis is terrible. Yeah. But when you have an illiterate society and you're the only one who can read the Bible, you can say what it says, whatever you want. It reminds me of the Pharisees. Like when you said that, no yeah. one else can read it, so you can't tell me I'm wrong. Well, and that's one of the one of the controls that, that totalitarian governments have always used is information control. That's mm-hmm. why the Great Wall of China exists. That's why you can't get information in and out of North Korea. That's an illiterate society is a more easily controlled society because you can only communicate one-on-one i can't you know kind of create a pamphlet that goes everywhere so it makes it harder to communicate those things and prentice down we learned was definitely that totalitarian society so there was that gap of silence in the very beginning Mm. do you think that was viola first coming down or do you think that was one of the scree was that the spackle spackle oh i think it was viola i think they made it pretty plain later that Aaron had discovered Viola and had been trying to catch her because women created that silence. Mm-hmm. The Spackle, did they have silence? I'm trying to remember. Did they have noise of some kind? The Spackle had noise. Okay. The Spackle had noise. They didn't speak. They were more animalistic, creaturistic. Right, so it wasn't quite the the articulate mind that the humans had. Correct. Okay. I love the squirrels, too. Hey, Whirler Boy. Hey, Whirler Boy. <laughs> like, again, voice acting was great. Hey, Whirler. Whirler Dog. <laughs> like, just picking on him. Like, that's what squirrels do now. Every time we take a walk and I see squirrels, I'm like, he's mocking me. <laughs> I don't know what Whirler meant. Did they ever come up to figure out what that was? They've never said what Whirler. Maybe it's just some squirrel insults. <laughs> it's, yeah, some weird thing. Like the whirly gigs that follow the yeah. tree, the helicopters. That's what they mean. Anyway. Yeah, I'm so assuming that was her, and Aaron had been trying to track her down. But then... You know, Aaron trips everybody up into, into making them think Todd heard the silence and now they're coming to investigate what's going on. It becomes a big thing and he doesn't understand at all what's, why it's a big thing. But I want to know how... So, was Viola in Aaron's noise and nobody saw it or was he that good at being able to hide what his noise gave off? Or did he immediately go and can and say you know to the mayor todd saw a girl so that any girl noise that was in aaron's head the mayor immediately would attribute to todd instead to, to get the blame or the noise off of him yeah well he, that would work because then if he heard it in aaron's noise aaron could say yeah i'm thinking about the boy todd you at as he would say I don't know. I will never forget that character name just because how Aaron yelled it out all the time. So we have the traditional um, motivating event. Mm-hmm. Chaos starts to break for, break loose, and Ben and Killian only explain half of what is. And then give the kid a book. You never taught him how to read. If you've got a book sitting there that you know this kid's future is going to be, and you know it's within a year. I mean, he's going to become a man. It wasn't like this snuck up on him too bad. He had they had thirty days, but they had tried. Ben had tried, and every time that he started to, the mayor would see it in his noise, in Todd's noise. But then teach him how, I mean, teach him how to put that away or something, or, or put instructions on how to read in the book or something How like do you that. put instructions how to read? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> figure something you out. You have to read instructions. You had 13 years to figure this out. Well, technically it'd be 14 in our years, but yeah. Yeah, true. It's 13 months of 30, yeah, whatever. So. <laughs> instructions on. I don't know. I don't think they could take photographs. I mean, we don't know what kind of technology they had. They had videos. Yeah. They could have made a video of how to read or a video explaining the whole story. Or a video of ha- reading the book. Ooh, I like the video of the explaining the story. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have a player. They would have had to figure out all that. But they had 13 years to steal the stuff and figure it out. But of course, you can't really, you can't sneak. I guess that's the whole thing. You can't sneak anything because your noise is there. <laughs> the whole, pl- all the plot holes are covered up by the fact that they can't get around anywhere. No, that, yeah. It's a good way to do it. I mean, it, I mean, I don't think that was his intention, but it does, it does eliminate a lot of the normal tropes of books mm-hmm. because you can't sneak. You can't pretend. Unless, as we'll get to later, you're the mayor because he and his people learned how to control noise. 
by doing their sacred chanting. Right. Which, and Todd started to do it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I am Todd Hewitt. I am 29, or I'm 12 years old, blah, blah, blah. That kind of thing. Which is all interesting, I think, setting things up for later. It'll be interesting to see. We haven't, none of us have read the second book, but you started it, didn't you? I got just a few pages in, and I realized if I started it, I would not be able to. We would have kicked you out of the recording circle. Correct. So we're, we own them. We're just waiting to get this recorded so we can read them. Fair enough. All right, what's the next topic? So, well, knife. We, we brought up, right, we brought up the not having the literacy factor in the book, but I don't think that Ben or Killian also prepared him, I mean, life on the farm, but didn't prepare him to be on his own. Uh, just, well, they did. They talked about him having some survival skills. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I guess. You can only do so much, but... As a mama, I'm like 12 years old now, get out in the swamp, go. And that's just harsh. That'd be Zoe. That's She's I mean. literally that age. Yeah. Not a good... Yeah. It wouldn't be a good place to be, but your only option there is that or you know, damning him. So... Here's your knife, here's your apple, here's your block of cheese, go. Yeah. Really should have been more food planned out, too. But anyway... They did their best. Can't steal the food without the noise going off. Did their best, got him out there, and then he just, again, discovers the silence and... The girl. The girl. Which is how she's referred to for most of the book. Well, she didn't do herself any favors by, like, not talking. But, of course, I guess if you land there and have no idea what noise is, and all of a sudden you're just hearing all this crazy, and, you know, hearing everything in this boy's head kind of thing. I don't know that I could have been that mute, though. You couldn't have, no. I, I could have. <laughs> Our family's talkers. None of us could have been quiet that long. Thanks. Well, including all of us. This whole wouldn't have lasted two minutes. Because I would have been like, what the heck is that? What are you, are, are you a telepath? What's going on? Like, I would have been asking questions right away. Maybe. Maybe it's better to stay quiet and not let them know. Well, and Just I guess if your first... Don't speak English. If your first interaction was Aaron... Mm. You're keeping your mouth shut. You might think everyone on the planet is like that, yeah. Correct. Violent and, you know, dark-minded and evil. And so keeping those things, keeping your mouth shut might feel feel the safest way. I think the next big thing is the, is the introduction with, well, not introduction, but the interaction with Aaron and Viola a second time as he's running away. Like, this guy keeps popping up out of nowhere, and he continues to do it the remainder of the book. So, this is the important part. If you have someone that is trying to kill you, and you have someone who is chasing after you, don't just try to kill them once. Assure that they're actually dead. (laughs) We say that. I know. But actually killing somebody, I think he makes a good point, is not going to be a simple task. And, like, the first time he does kill something, it's not even a human, and he gets, like... Sick. It takes months of, forgive the term, but brainwashing to get soldiers prepared for their first kill. Like, the reason they use silhouettes on the target is to start mentally preparing them for the fact that they're not just shooting a target, they're killing a human being. I guess it's the mama bear in me. And again, Viola was new, it wasn't family, it wasn't like it was Ben. But that sense of instinct or that sense of protecting I feel again I've never thank God been in that situation would take over and protective murderous rage would take over I, well I hope so especially if, if they've come at you twice like the first time alright fair enough you're going to let the swamp take him the second time okay this, the third time no I'm not. There, are, there will be no more chances somebody needs to die because I don't want to do this Isn't again. Isn't that when someone did die? I don't remember how many there were. I don't know. One of the times... Like... In the swamp after the croc, then at some point when he was with the soul, like the army was marching, mm-hmm. and then when he stabbed... When he stabbed... Um, Todd. Todd. Then there was one after that. Then the one where he found him at the camp. Which was with... With Viola. And then the one in the cave where he finally killed him. Yeah. Well, she killed him. She killed him. So, yeah, there's five instances, four of which he had opportunity. Anyway. I don't know. I still know if you can do it. Well, I, I, I guess I would also feel like if you're on a farm 
You're used to death a little bit. You're used huh? to death a little bit. But more. you've also been raised in a religious order, order that I'm, ass- I'm assuming talked about murder being bad, but maybe they didn't because they were all murderers. Maybe that was the point. I don't they know. even talked about that being a way to like dehumanize them. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. We'll have to read. We'll have to find out more and see how that works. It was interesting to see the uh, different way the ways different villages dealt with the situation. Mm-hmm. So you had one kind of the first place they come. I forget what it was, but the matriarchal, like with Hildy, her and her sister ran the ran the show basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they kind of lived intermingled there. Yes, they did because her, her and her husband lived in the same house, but they were. Out in the middle of nowhere. And then they had some traders in, in there, and they had, but they also had some people they had adopted from Prentice Town because they were the closest. So they kind of lived the most normal. Relatively is what we yeah. would consider, I yeah. would say. Then you had the one with the doctor where there was like a... Place where all the women went. It was a patriarchal society, and yeah. the men, men ran everything. Yeah, but in, even to a, I mean, a greater extent than normal. Like, they, we're not even going to listen to a woman kind of thing. Like, they mm-hmm. live over there. What, you know, they come by whenever. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know exactly how that worked, but... Well, and I feel like Prentice Town would have been that way with if women. If the women if live. They, right, if the women were around. I could be wrong. That's just kind of the feeling that it sets. I still don't understand. I don't get how they gathered... I guess at the at the end he says the rumors are almost stronger than the army. But how did they go? They went town to town gathering up all the men, like, or were they? Because Prentice Town only had a like a hundred people left in it, right? But did okay? Did I miss the end? Like, did I not understand the end of the book then? The ending. Everyone marched up into the city, and the mayor said, "Now I'm the president." Right, but it wasn't everybody. Like, there wasn't that many no. people. Because, you Cause know... Because most of them didn't actually fight. Right. He said rumors of, of an army are sometimes more powerful than the army yeah, itself. Yeah, so it wasn't thousands of people. I don't know that even many gathered with them. Maybe a few. But then how do you hold the presidency when people realize there is no army? I guess we'll have to continue reading to find out, but... Well, because they came forward as, a, as the the marching party in the beginning, and so I... if. That could have been the whole party, and everybody else just naturally assumed the army was coming. That the army was coming. Right. So when the army doesn't show, are you going to give? You're going to continue to let this suicidal or homicidal maniac who murdered all the women in his town be president? I want to know where like everyone from Haven went. Which one was Haven? The last one. Oh, they were hiding in the rooms. They were all gone. They were all peeking. Remember that he looked around. He said there were eyes looking down at him. So they basically said, if you take him and go, we're fine. And so they, they sacrificed Todd for the sake of their town. That That's how I read it. Do I misunderstand? No, no, no. Yeah, so he so he was able to maintain, hold his noise back, and not let Todd know he was there until the very last moment. And so he gets, he hides his noise until the very last moment when he reveals himself to Todd, but, mm-hmm. but then Todd sees the eyes looking down on him. Basically, everyone, he was coming there to warn them, and everyone said, we're good. You take the boy and go. And now he's almost, again, almost killed Prentice Jr. twice. What are they going to do to him? I'll tell you what. Okay, sorry. Let's go back. Because I'm still mad that Manchin got killed. So am I. That was like the, I'm like, oh gosh. Oh god, no. No, 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 no. It's too early. Like book two, maybe. Book three, all right. But book one? I was one? sitting at the table and I just slammed the book <laughs> shut is that when you said you almost threw your, threw your book? Yeah. And then at the end to no, take no. When I first the first time I wanted to throw the book was when he met the spackle because it was eleven o'clock at night and it was time to close the book and we were in bed and you're like okay it's time to shut it off and literally I think it's chapter twenty four because I remember it in my head it says. And he turns, and it's a spackle or whatever. And that's how the chapter stops. And I had to close the book and end right there. Oh. And so I'm like, oh, oh. Now, second time I wanted to throw the book was... Manchi. Manchi. That was so sad. That was terrible. Yeah, it was. Not as bad as Viola. Because now, like, what's the... I just don't get it. Like, there felt like there'd be more plot development to that. Where yeah. is it going to go? It almost feels like the whole plot is starting over. Everything that tied it to the first... That tied the first book... Is the rest of the shuttle going to come Well, they down? do have to deal with that in seven months or something. Yeah. Right, but there's, the there's lots of time. 
Unless they do a giant time skip. It doesn't matter if 20,000 people are coming. You're not holding that planet. Because they're coming with new technology. They're not coming with... Because they don't have the noise. Yeah, with your... Well, they will. But they're coming with new technology, but lacking basic skills of survival. You don't know that. Viola even said that. Like, just basic planting and tending, she thought they were so remedial, but they're going to need those to be able to come and survive. Well, we'll so maybe they'll have to rely on... We'll have to read the rest of the, the series and find out. But maybe that's it. Maybe he uses the, we know how to survive here. And you don't. And you don't. And we'll keep you. We'll keep things under control. All right, what else? There's so many ways the next book could go. I know, right? This, well, this is nice to be the first, like, we haven't read the rest of them yet. Usually by the time we record, we've... Somebody's spoiled themselves and read the rest of it, and you're like holding your face, going, "Oh, I, I can't see anything." Doing that, I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. <laughs> because we know it's not me reading ahead. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> All right, what else is anything big else big stand out? Discussion point wise. Again, I'm curious about how the movie plays things. Yeah, watching the trailer after I read it, I, I like the special effect they're using for the noise and the way they're the way they're mm-hmm. doing it. Um, yeah. I'm not looking forward to being having a huge love story kind of thing being thrust in there, but I feel it'll, there'll have to be. Yeah. And then, like, do they keep Daisy Ridley alive because she's popular? Like, I don't, like they completely change the story? I don't know. I love the guy who's playing the mayor. I can't remember his name, but I've seen him in a lot of stuff, and he's he's just got that bad guy vibe. Like, he can play bad guy any day of the week. <laughs> and then Nick Jonas is uh, the as the as the son. Yeah. That, that <laughs> like. <laughs> that'll be good <laughs> I think he'll do a good job of they being, had a big cast for this of being one, hateable yeah pretty all star pretty all star cast for what was an un, fairly unknown book to me I don't know if it was like a big popular YA book that everyone knew about before I don't think before. so well we'll see I'm curious how it goes let me bounce back did anybody expect or see Ben returning that mm. threw me for a loop no no, I assumed they were both dead. I don't know how he would have possibly survived. Yeah. Unless Killian, like, did some major heroics to sacrifice himself and Ben had some sort of secret escape thing, but I would assume they would have surrounded the place or something. I definitely thought they were both gone. I did, too. I just I just wanted to check. Like, was there some foreshadowing that I didn't see, but... And then what, hap- what happened to Ben? Because it left it unknown. He went off to do a thing, and so he still could come back. Yeah, you could be around. Yeah. It was it was nice to give some hope though, because it mm-hmm. was that series of everything that could go wrong is going wrong. Just bang, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah, nothing's going their way, but they're still surviving. Like at any point, if that much stuff goes wrong, you're you're done. You give up. So it was nice to have something go their way and some luck. Like and Wilf was that kind of step of luck too where he didn't care. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, I know that's not your name, but that's what we're calling you. Like that that line of okay, we'll let it go. We'll let it go. You're you're you'll be safe. And he most likely knows where they came from too, which right. makes it a good servant character. But he's apprentice boy, mm-hmm. not apprentice town man. So that's the difference. He's still there's the strong distinction. Yeah, it's almost the old um, age of accountability concept where you know at that thirteen you become a man in, in like the Jewish faith, or that's the day. And of course, it means a lot more in this in this case because you have to do something bad. Who were they? Who were they going to have him kill? Do you think? Ooh. Would they've had? Would he? They try to have him kill Ben or Killian? Because that never would have went down. Yeah, I don't think that would have happened. So it might have been just some unnamed ta- townsman. Well, Aaron wanted it to be him. Well, that's what I was say. Yeah, I was. I thought it had mentioned in the book that it was supposed to be. Aaron, and that's why he was so hell bent on getting him to die because like part of his faith was you have to kill me and he had it was that was that why he kept punching him and making him hate him i think that might be it to to build the anger yeah because he mentioned that in the end yeah oh wait wait what are you talking about at the end scene when they were in the cave yeah oh yeah he i knew he aaron's plan was for him to kill him i don't know if that was the town's plan or if that was just aaron's plan that he that 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 was the Hmm. sacrifice that's a good question was it mayor prentices i mean i feel like it had I don't know. I feel like Aaron and Mayor Prentice had to be pretty tight, and the, that was probably the plan all along. Oh, see, I think but... Mayor, I, I think the mayor is the puppet master, and Aaron was a useful idiot. I don't think he cared a lick about Aaron. I don't think so either. He used him to keep the people under control, as in religion is the opiate of the masses, and 
That was it. Huh. No, that's not how that's was, not how I took it. Aaron that's... couldn't control his noise like the the print like the circle could, and the circle was tight. They were the apprentice town. They were the uh, mayor's men, not Aaron. That would be my guess. Yeah. For all that matters now. But. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, the ending. It blew it right. The, this was this was a five star book until that last chapter. Yeah. Well, if at least four and a half. Either either give me the full trilogy book, like give me all of K. Wass walking. Yep. Or give an ending that a book can be stand as an individual. Yeah. Well, that's what we've discussed over the last couple episodes. Nobody writes a book anymore. You write a trilogy or a series, like. Well, and some of that is sufficient if you end the book. In such a way that it's sat- a yeah. like, satisfying. Especially it's not a satisfying ending. Most of the more contemporary, so like more slice of life that you enjoy, tend to be standalones. Yeah, but most people don't write slice of life anymore. Yeah. Well, slice of life, thank you, Mary Jacobson, in our Facebook group, finally gave me the best answer for the genre of Little Women and the Penderwicks and what was the other thing we put in that category? Where there's no big... You can't kill a mockingbird. Yeah, and, and to a lesser degree. But there's no there's no big MacGuffin or big bad guy. It's yeah. just living life, but it's still interesting. So that's it. Slice of, life, slice of life literature. Thank you to our Facebook group for being our outsourced brain. <laughs> okay. On that note, if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet for the good conversation or to help build the conversation, it is facebook.com slash group slash reading radio, or at least look it up. You'll find us. I promise. Or go to our <laughs> website, reading-radio.com, where we have all the links there. We're going to try a uh, special experiment for our next month's book at the recommendation of some of our readers and for the requirement that Laura has to read a nonfiction book for school. We're going to combine the two efforts and we're going to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Do you know who it's by? It is by Robert Kiyosaki. So it is a, is a nonfiction book, but it is written in kind of an allegorical tale of he tells the story of his rich dad and his poor dad and what they taught him about money. Uh, I enjoyed it. 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't read it since, so uh, we're going to see what it's like and get some insight on what you can learn. While we're reading this, or while we're talking about this, just thanks to everybody for sharing and promoting the group. We're actually on track to blow away our best month of downloads ever, which is amazing. Uh, thank you for suggesting more books there at the top of our Facebook group and for just listening, giving us a chance to come into your lives. We've heard some comments and feedback from our fans, and it's wonderful to know that we're not just speaking into a void, at least completely. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for listening. It means a lot. I definitely didn't expect like to have actual listeners when we started. <laughs> <laughs> you thought this was going to be a hobby? Yeah. Just you and I do? No, we actually have people who listen. And so. if you're on the Facebook group, encourage these two to then watch the movie and do special podcasts that are shorter, but that compare the book and the movie, because I think it's really cool. Yeah, but this is 20 minutes of us complaining that the books or the movie sucks. You know we're going to have to drag you into that, right? And maybe (laughs) Zoe, too, because it'd be interesting to see an opinion of someone who hasn't read the book. Well, that's what she said about Outsiders. Like, she liked the movie The Outsiders, but we all thought it was garbage because it wasn't exactly like the book. But the book was so much better. Well, (laughs) duh. (laughs) But still. The book is always better. All right, on that, thank you all. We'll talk to you next month. Happy reading. Happy reading.